We brand ourselves as the Open Cloud Company, which actually pleases me greatly because I work solely on OpenStack. And OpenStack is an open source cloud computing solution uh, for storage, uh, actual computing cycles, um, and anything you want to do in the cloud, you can do with OpenStack. Um, so I'm pretty excited about what's going on. So I got there about two years ago, and two years ago there was a whiteboard, and they just started to make OpenStack. So I started with nothing. But the thing with OpenStack is they launch every six months. <laughs> So it's kind of insane. So what do you do to grow the documentation? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about, is um, how in the world do you do this? So the way we do it is with a tool set. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today, is um, what tools are we using? So first of all, we have to track bugs, and we do these things called blueprints. Um, and I treat it like a software development project. So it has source control. Um, all of our sources either Aqua Waddle or some sort of XML. Um, and in the demo, I'll show you more. Um, but I think the great thing is, the more people you can get to review your docs, the better off it's going to be. So um, I'll talk about that and actually walk through how to review docs. And um, I also have a great continuous integration system that builds automatically as soon as someone approves. This is all enabled through a tool that we call uh, Cloud, docs. Cloud Docs. It's a Maven plugin, so that's what else I'm going to demonstrate. And um, lastly, the biggest one to me is that the community drives the documentation. So um, that's the, the tools are great, and it's all very interesting, but the community-driven stuff is the most interesting to me. So here's what I'm going to walk through. Um, let's say that you uh, want to get started with OpenStack documentation. So how do you do so? Well, you can start out by just doing reviews. So you might head to review.openstack.org and find a new patch to the docs to look at. So what you can do is go into your terminal window and you type in a, you install this tool called Git Review. And our continuous integration team made it. And it lets me go find something to review, type in the one line at the command line, and I get all the source files for the um, documentation. Um, I'm going to edit it. I use Oxygen. Oxygen is kind enough to give OpenStack contributors a free license if we just ask because they support open source projects, which is pretty awesome because it's a great editor and uh, we've been able to do some enhancements to it so that people can edit um, Waddle. Waddle is a markup language that lets you describe a REST API. Um, and I'm just learning about API documentation, but that's actually what I'm going to demonstrate today in hopes to find more people who are trying to figure this out, too. Um, so I can edit Waddle and Oxygen um, thanks to some special schematron rules that the doc tool scheme has put together. And um, then the other tool they've made is this Maven plugin that is now open source. And um, you just type in Maven generate sources. The first time you run it, it's crazy long because Maven actually goes out and gets all the dependencies you need to build extremely handy. Um, and that also lets us automate it on a build server. Um, once I generate it, I'll open it up so you can see what the output looks like. And then um, the last two lines are what let you um, do the commit and amend someone else's patch. So I'm going to review someone's submission. Um, maybe I'll find something in it that I just want to change a little bit, and I can actually amend it. The patch still stays attributed to the original author, but I can then do all of these reviews, all of these edits. Um, just to make the, it's that quality of documentation is right. Um, we're just trying to make sure that everything that gets in is quality. Um, and then Git Review, um, minus V is just verbose, so I can show you guys what's going on. But Git Review will then look at all of it, rebase it against the master branch, and say, oh, you mean for this to go back on review.opensector.org. So that's how I'm going to demo live now today. And I think it'll work. <laughs> it really should work. Should. It'll work. That's one of Warren's favorite words. Can you have a Wi Fi change? <laughs> yeah, don't be. Uh... I had that window. You guys saw it, right? There it is. All right, so this is a basically already, I've already pulled down the source. I've been working on it a while, you know. So um, I know the state that my Brand, my local branch is in, so it's pretty safe for me to run Git review because I've already rebased against master and I'm not going to wreck anything. I mean, are you guys all using Git or, you know, you know source control stuff. So, um, so I'm basically going to go out to review.omstack.org. Oh, that's hard to see. How do I make that easier to see? I can I see it. That's good. Okay. Um, so one of my coworkers 
Dr. Zion Fleming has posted this um, patch. Uh, the other nice thing is when you put a bug number in your commit message, it links it over to Launchpad, so I can look at what bug she's fixing, um, get more of a description, that kind of thing. Uh, so I kind of know this bug, I kind of know what she's doing. So I'm going to copy this, uh, I guess it's some sort of Garrett ID. Garrett is the system that runs review.opostack.org. Um, because, you know, Git has a change ID, so that's what this is. This is the change ID for Git. Uh, but we have a, a second identifier um, specifically for Git review. So I'm going to type in. I'm going to type in. Minus D, paste that in. It's going to go out to our um, Garrett repository and pick up a copy. <coughs> I hope that won't take long, too long on this Wi-Fi, but I did it earlier in this <coughs> I didn't put it in the fire. I did? That's it's, getting it's slower times. Yeah. <coughs> and, and, you know, our repository is getting kind of big. Um, we probably have maybe six manuals in there now. Um, and adding more, and what I'm going to show you is um, actually going to output to um, API to the sector. So what I'm actually doing is a patch to this site. Uh, this site takes, what we're doing with this site is, is giving it an entire listing of the reference information for our particular um, API. So, um, man, that, there's too much white space, sorry. Um, but for every resource that you can call, it's git, put, post, delete. Um, using REST API, you can do these calls programmatically um, against servers. Let's spin up 25 servers because we have some big job we want to run on them. Um, let's assign them all IP addresses so that they can run web stuff without changing IP addresses, um, that kind of thing. So, sorry that looks kind of crappy, but it's um. All right, so next up is just kind of edit. So, I'm going to um, go down into where I know the source files to be, um, API site, and um, take a look at the source. Um, All that the doc book is doing here is actually making a um, that big index page. So actually, maybe I'll just um, open from the XML. Oh. Oh. So it'll launch my uh, oxygen editor. So um, this is what the Maven plugin. Um, basically retrieves in order to understand what to build. So I'm telling you, go get these models, go get these resources, go get all the dependencies, and uh, generate source. So um, because we know all of these models are in these directories, we can have it seek them out and build it all into this page. And, uh, The one that she put in is a I'll just edit this one so you can see. All right, so basically a waddle is like learning an entirely new market language. Um, so it's kind of frustrating at first, and I think a lot of people kind of throw their hands up in the air when they look at this as source. Um, but I kind of see it as a great way to describe a REST API because you have, it's, it's actually dead simple when you start to look at it. It's a bunch of resources. Um, what can those resources accept as parameters? So when I do a create server, I have to give it my tenant ID, right? So repeatedly over and over, all of this stuff is really easily described with a waddle. Um, and what we can do then is, um, so I, you know, maybe I don't like a list of volume attachments. I don't know. This is the server. I'll leave that text alone. But um, let's just uh, so. 
So now, in the directory with the palm, I'm going to do MBN uh, clean, which will get rid of that target directory, so that I know I'm building from a clean state. generate sources which will um, build this um, big HTML page. So I hope I can actually show you, um, the point is that I have this huge listing um, from probably building from like 20 waddles because there's that many APIs that we're trying to describe um, as OpenStack APIs. Um, there are probably 20 some extensions on one of the APIs. So with 20 waddles I can describe those 20 extensions. Um, and make this long page that has a lot of JavaScript because what it lets you do is there's a detail button and it lets you expand um, so that you can see all the resources and, and get this bigger listing and code examples. So it built and I'll just go ahead and open the file of built. Which should look like the other one exactly. Um, how in the world am I going to be able to scroll over and show you this? Change your uh, resolution. All right. Well, what do you think? Uh, wow. Yeah. That's 1680 by. Right. I don't think it really is, right? You might want to change your brightness, actually. Oh, but that, oh, but oh, but that one has it at 800 by 600. just work. Always. <laughs> okay, that, that's close enough. Okay, so we actually edited, you know, supposedly something to do with volumes. Um, I had to scroll through all this stuff. Um, and I actually, um, so what we got, and I can show you source, but what we got was from this model that's very descriptive of exactly what this API looks like, I get uh, a nice neat line that I can then expand and contract. And I mean, if you actually use source on this, um, it's insane how much extra coding you have to do just to do that expanded thing with, uh, uh, I mean, come on, nobody's gonna hand put this, right? This is all very programmatic. Uh, I can, can get past where it's gonna do it, right? So there's the actual content. Um, the other thing we also have is that we have the option of either display, displaying um, an XML um, example or a JSON example. So that's where these drop downs come in as well. Um, and all of that from basically this uh, boat of uh, XML. Um, with pointers to um, samples. Cool. So let's say we made an edit, then um, we actually just. Um, Go back and say git commit amend. And it will bring up um, her you know, previous patch message. Um, so I can say below this, I can put, you know, patch set ads, whatever, you know, edits I did, fixes, typos, whatnot. Um, then I just uh, do git review again, and I won't actually do it since I didn't actually amend anything. But then that actually patches it back up to review second. And the patch that you can compare patch sets against each other. Um, and then if I actually sign in, um, which um, this is also part of the review process that's nice because 
I mean, you know how it is. In, in documentation, you usually have a, a, a core group of trusted contributors where you're like, everything they write is gold, pure gold. I trust them with any review. Um, so I actually have, I have a handful of contributors that I, I trust that way. They're part of OpenStackDocs core. And um, if you're core, when you hit the review button, um, you can say just looks good to me. And this is part of our governance structure. Like, um, you have to have two um, plus two votes, or no, you have to have, you, any project can do it however they want, but like sometimes you say you have to have two plus two votes before you can actually go in and hit this approve button, and the approve button is what actually sends it through to the Jenkins server to automatically build. So as soon as um, I consider it good enough, and I see that two other people have given it plus one, um, actually that's really good that he gave it plus one because he's the SME on the project, um, and so I can go ahead and say, um, hit review, and then I'll say plus two plus one, and then it'll build automatically and be live on the site. Any questions? I actually purposely only wanted to show the waddle because it's a unique output that we basically, and this is what I was trying to explain to Florian earlier, but that like we could have, we probably should have used or maybe could have used Publican because we would get the PDF and HTML that we get anyway. Uh, but this actually gave us a totally unique output that nobody else had made before. And I don't know if any of the rest of you have had to document RESTful APIs, but uh, Waddle is a standard from 2002, everyone hates it. Um, uh, there is no other real true standard emerging for how you document REST APIs. Um, I think that Mashery um, open sourced a tool um, within a month of Swagger open sourcing a tool. So like everyone's kind of trying to get to be the standard, but there is none. Um, so I, I expect this to evolve, but I was like very pleased that we could get this really complicated output from pretty simple Anybody else? Uh, any? I have a quick terminology question. You said yep. SME. Do you mean subject matter expert? Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, and this is this is the other. I don't. Do you guys. Um, so the other outputs we get are PDF and HTML. So. Do you want to see Jenkins? What else would you want to? Jenkins is our, like, um, it's basically like a rich man's cron, I guess I've heard it described that way, which means you can do pretty complex build trigger on this, watch this um, repository before you build, um, all that kind of thing. That's our web help output. Um, So, yeah, docs, jobs. 
because it is governed by the people writing the code, so they have to vote whether a change gets through. Um, but yeah, these, the configuration is pretty simple. I mean, it's, it's, it's a big page configuration, but as long as I know, um, I run it here, this is the repository I'm always constantly monitoring, and then um, it just FTPs it to the website. It's really like lights off, hands off. Somebody votes on it, even in Australia, and it goes through and it's published. So, and I, I love like logging a bug in the afternoon before I go home, and somebody picks it up on the other side of the world, and it's already kind of ready for me to review in the morning. It's, it doesn't happen often, but it's really cool that it's all enabled. So. Anything else? Yes. Yeah. Jenkins like it developed in house. Um, it, it, was, or something? it was Hudson, and um, oh, I think the history was something to do with Sun and that thing. Mozilla uses Jenkins. Yeah. I'm not clear on what for, but for um, automated builds. Yeah. 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 Continuous deployment stuff. So, yeah. Um, so it was using it just for the sign off. Oh, okay. was, was all that you saw there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, Jenkins, Jenkins is for the building and the sign-off stuff is all in this tool called here. So, yeah. so yeah, I mean that's how you continuously deploy documentation based on reviews that are voted upon pretty much. I had a hundred um, doc patches pushed through in a month. So efficient. Like if you have like a whole bunch of commits like around, like you know, it's a very busy time and people are pushing through a lot of commits. I mean, it, it, does it push through a build after every commit? Uh, if it is voted upon, yes. So here's the queue right now. This isn't too bad. Um, I the most backlog I've seen in the code review is about ten to twelve. Um, but if you and this is a nice thing about this system too is I can actually see what's merged. So all these have merged, and you can see like we're getting, you know, there's five patches in a day. That's pretty awesome, right? So, and yeah, I run it. I run it exactly like the other projects are run. You log bugs, you commit patches against bugs. Um, you know, out of nothing, because there was nothing. <laughs> 